it's Abby Andrew back today for another live stream on Renee of Paris. Today I am clearly in a different location than I normally am in and that's because today's video is going to be all about washing wigs. I have so many wigs that I need to catch up on washing today so I thought it would be fun to come live on here wash this beautiful lovely wig. This is my Angela wig from the Alexander Couture collection, one of my favorite styles of all time. Love this style. It's in uh, Champagne R, which is a rooted light platinum blonde. And I can even show you guys what the wig looks like on me right now, but it's very much in need of a good wash. Now, I do something really funny with my wigs. If you guys follow me on my own Instagram, abbyandrew.yt, you know I switch up my style very regularly, all the time. I'm always wearing different styles, and I get a little bit lazy with my wig washing sometimes. And a lot of times when I've worn a wig long enough that it's kind of in need of a wash, Sometimes I get lazy and I just switch to a different wig and I put the wig that needs a wash away for a little while and I'm like, oh, I'll just wear this other one for a bit. And then I end up having all these wigs that need a good wash after a while because, you know, if you just keep switching, running away from having to wash them as often. But I will go over today the best practices for washing your synthetic wig, questions like how often you should be washing your synthetic wig, and just how to wash it properly to keep it lasting and looking nice as long as possible. Because if you guys aren't familiar with synthetic wigs, they do of course eventually have a lifespan, but with proper care you can extend this and typically with daily wear you can have a wig that lasts like typically four to six months roughly in my personal experience. And especially if you take proper care of them, wash them with the right products, you can really extend this um, be like around that six month point or so. So I'm going to go over all the products and just talk about the best practices. So for one thing, I will talk about the synthetic shampoo and conditioner from Renee of Paris. So a lot of people might not realize that if you have a synthetic wig, it is best, pretty important actually, to wash it with products made for synthetic hair. You don't want to be washing it with products made for human hair. Now a big reason for this is because human hair products tend to have a lot of harsh chemicals on it to wash human hair that are just not necessary for washing your wigs. So if you use this on your wigs, you can actually damage them, you can make them lose their shine too early, like that really nice natural looking shine that a nice synthetic wig has um, that makes your hair just look nice and healthy. That can, it kind of can strip that away too soon and just make it look dull. So if you use proper synthetic shampoo and conditioner and the right synthetic products like these, then you can extend the life of your wig and just keep it looking really nice and new for as long as possible. And of course, there are other products from Renee of Paris, like the Liquid Revive, which is a fantastic product just for keeping that nice, healthy looking shine to help get rid of flyaways and things like that. That's a really fantastic product. Um, and then there's also a hairspray designed for synthetic hair from Renee of Paris as well. So all of these are really great to have, and they're just nice, simple products just to keep. If you are a synthetic wig wearer, they're really great to have on hand. And of course, as well, you're going to be wanting to use a wig brush and a wig comb. Here's the ones I'm going to be working with today. It doesn't really matter which wig brush or wig comb, but stuff that's designed specifically for wigs is typically going to keep your wig looking nice and fresh for longer. So it's just good to have something that's not going to tear the fiber. Certain brushes that are used for human hair can be a little too harsh for a synthetic wig. So these are just designed in a way that's really just going to keep the fibers looking nice. This wide tooth comb is super helpful for curly wigs especially. This is a really great detangling comb, especially for curly wigs. And then this one I always keep in my purse because it folds and it's just very convenient. And this tail has a lot of styling uses as well. Okay, so let's talk about this wig. So this is a beautiful wig. Love this one. One of my favorites. This is Angela from the Alexander Couture Collection. Again, this is in the color Champagne R. Um, if you want, I can show you how it looks on, but I will warn you, it is in need of a good wash. It's really not that bad in terms of how it looks on camera, uh, but something, some ways you'll know if your wig is ready for a wash is that the hairs, you'll kind of just feel it in the hair. If you're running your fingers through it, it just feels like it might need a good wash. Not that it feels like so dirty or anything like that, but you just, you just can tell it's not as silky. It doesn't flow as nicely. Like it still has a really nice flow to it, but it's just, when it's nice and clean, it just is so silky and you can just tell that it's just not at that point when it needs a good wash. And typically, uh, with daily wear, I would typically recommend washing your wigs maybe once every two weeks or so, but it definitely depends on a few other factors, like first of all, of course, how often you're wearing them, are you wearing it every day, and maybe the climate that you're living in, is it hot weather, or are you going to be sweating a lot in the wig cap, and do you work out in it, things like that. 
Uh, one tip that I also will mention that just made me think of this is that sometimes I will actually have a designated workout wig for that exact reason because then if you know you're going to be doing an activity that maybe your wig will be getting dirty more often, like maybe you want to work out in that wig or you want to wear it to the beach or something like that, that can be the designated wig that you have to like not be afraid if it gets messed up. And typically I would definitely not have that be like one of your nice new wigs. A lot of times if you are an everyday wig wearer, eventually you're going to be replacing your wig with a newer version of it just to have a nice new fresh one. And typically, like and for example, the wig Tatum, I've had so many Tatums in my lifetime because that's a wig that I, I wore daily for years. And typically if I had a new Tatum, I would then take that old one and the old Tatum that was still in like kind of okay shape, but it was the older one. That would typically become my workout wig, the wig I wore to the beach with friends and just things like that. So that way if I was ever in a, ever in a place that would, the wig would get a little bit more dirty more easily, then I, it would like keep the nice new one cleaner for longer. So that's a nice tip because as you become a daily wig wearer, eventually you do end up replacing the synthetic wigs that you wear daily just to keep a nice new fresh one on hand. And that old one you can kind of use to be like the workout wig, the wig you sweat in and, and things like that. Or like, for example, something you encounter a little bit more in the summer months is if you go to a campfire. <laughs> if I ever wear a wig to a campfire, that wig is just going to smell like campfire until I wash it. So if days like that, you know you're going to need to wash it like that day, pretty much. Same with going to the beach. If I ever wear a wig to the beach, I know I pretty much have to wash it like that day. <laughs> um, so yes, yeah. so this is a wig that I was wearing daily for a bit. I will put it on just to show you guys. Um, it, it does still look like it's in pretty good shape. But you can just start to tell when it needs a wash, if it just maybe isn't flowing as nicely, etc. So still such a beautiful, beautiful wig, but we could definitely make it look even more beautiful. And of course, I'm going to be washing it in this live stream, so it probably won't dry by the time I end the live. But I can also post photos on Instagram later just to show you uh, the results of the before and after. So. You saw that before, so check out my Instagram or maybe Renee Ferris's like Instagram story or something later if you want to see the after of washing it. And I also have a wig on standby that is already washed, but I haven't done anything to it since it dried. And then I'll show you guys what to do once it does dry and it's on your wig head. So just very quickly going to recap the supplies you're going to need. You're definitely going to want a comb or brush on hand, wig comb or wig brush, and the proper synthetic shampoo and conditioner. Again, it's not recommended to use human hair products because that can damage the fibers much more quickly and just stop your wig from lasting as long. So you're typically going to want to be able to work with something you can fill up with water. So that can be like a sink that you can fill with water, or if you don't have access to that, even just like a basin, a tub, a plastic bin, something you can fill up with water. It doesn't really matter what it is. And you're going to want to use cool, lukewarm water, but Air on the side of cold water, you probably are going to be working with cold water. You definitely don't want to use hot water because that can also damage the fibers, especially if they're not heat friendly. So recommended to use cold water. So I'm going to go ahead. The first thing I'm going to do is fill this sink up with cool water. And I'm going to put some Rene of Paris shampoo in it. And just so you can kind of get a feel for what this product does, let me just quickly read the description on the back. So this is the Rene of Paris Prepare Shampoo for Synthetic Hair. Specifically, again, look for where it says for synthetic hair. Just to read the description, this luxurious shampoo is the ultimate in moisture replenishing cleansers. The gentle combination of plant and vegetable extracts along with natural essential oils and vitamins provides a gentle but thorough cleansing of hair. And this does not contain conditioner, it's really just made to wash the wig. So then afterwards, if you do want to condition it, you can use the Rene of Paris conditioner and that'll help replenish that nice natural looking shine. People talk about like aesthetic wig having shine. There's like two different types of shine. There's like the shine that like costumey wigs will have, but then there's also like a natural healthy looking shine that healthy hair has. And that's what you want to replenish. <laughs> um, okay, so the first thing, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and fill this up with cool water. Bear with me with the noise here. <laughs> Let me know if you guys can hear me over the running water. I think you probably should be able to. Um, the recommendation for this is to pour a small amount, one capful of shampoo into the sink. Now you can literally measure out one capful, but I think it's fine to just pretty much go with like a nice just 
squeeze it like once into the water. If you're working with a longer wig, you might want to use a bit more. If you're working with a shorter wig, you can get away with using a bit less. Okay, so we can hear you. Amazing, wonderful. That's good to know. Sometimes you get worried. You end up just kind of talking to yourself in situations like that. <clears throat> okay, so I'll just fill it up pretty much like halfway, and let's go ahead and just pour a cap full worth of water. You can kind of eyeball what that's going to be, and because I am working with a longer wig, I might use just a tiny bit more. Like that much. I'm going to switch it out with the hands. Let's see, it gets a little bit sudsy, if you guys can see that well. Now let's go ahead. I'm almost scared to do this because I'm scared to see how dirty this wig is. It's, like I said, sometimes I end up, when it, when it comes time to wash a wig, I'll end up just switching to a different wig for a while just to be lazy. And then when it comes time to wash the wig, it's like, all right, it's like a little bit overdue because I hadn't been wearing it for a bit. So you're going to want to gently, I kind of typically will hold the wig from the inside of the cap. I don't you put it inside out or anything. I just very gently dunk it into the water. You want to be careful that when you're just putting it in, the hair isn't going all over the place. You kind of want to have control of where the hair is flowing. And just very gently kind of swish it around with your fingers. Now something I did forget to mention is a step that I actually did off camera before I went live, is the first thing you're going to want to do is very gently comb or brush out the wig you're working with. Again, using a wig brush or wig comb. This is great because it is a detangling comb. I already detangled it before going live, but you just want to gently just detangle the hairs. You never want to tug or pull too hard because you can um, just rip the hair in a way that's not great for it. You can even tear the lace or the monofilament if you're not careful. You don't have to be like super, super cautious, but if you have a, a knot, you want to gently work through it. You don't want to just like tug it through because <laughs> you want to keep your wigs in nice shape. You fill this up a little bit more so you can get a bit of drain out. Okay, bear with me here while I finish refilling the sink. Alright, great. Now as you let it soak in the water, I typically like to kind of gently hold it by the wig cap just so the hair is kind of moving in a controlled way and not going all over the place. Just kind of like dunk it in and out and swish it around with my fingers. You can even very gently kind of like rub the hair a bit to make sure the shampoo is really getting in all the fibers. I don't know if you guys can see, but the water is, you can kind of start to see some of the dirt and other things in the wig start to come out in the water. And I guess that's a good sign because that means it's coming out of the wig. It can be a little shocking sometimes to realize that you were going around with all that in your hair. Typically you don't have to keep refilling the sink like this. This one is just kind of drains a little bit. Um, okay, so you can kind of work it through. You can even let it sit and soak for like 10 to 15 minutes. You can leave it for a while. If you feel like it's really dirty, you can just let it get a nice good soak. Or if you're in a hurry, you can do a couple minutes. It doesn't make a big difference. Of course, because I am on live stream, I'm not going to make you sit with here with, with me for like 15 minutes just waiting for it to soak. So I'm quickly going to move to the next step. But just to show you, um, sometimes I also like to very gently, the inside of the wig cap, that's what's really touching your scalp, especially if you don't wear a wig cap or anything in between the wig and your own head. So very gently, you might just want to take some of the water, just very gently rub these parts where there's maybe like the silicone strip that might collect more sweat and natural oils, all very natural stuff, but something that you can kind of pay attention to as you're washing it, just very gently rub around, maybe like around the ear tabs and the inside of the cap. But again, you definitely want to be very gentle not and careful not to scratch it with your nails or anything like that. Are you washing a human hair wig? This is a tutorial on synthetic uh, wigs washing. So if you want, maybe in the future we can do another tutorial on human hair wigs. This particular one is for synthetic wigs. Okay. Now sometimes if I have more time and I'm not live streaming, I might let it soak for a bit longer, but because I don't want to make you all sit here and watch my wig soak with me, I will go ahead and move on to the next step. Just kind of switch it through a few more times just to make sure all the hair gets nice and washed. Now, I'm going to drain that out. 
And once it's totally clear, you can start to fill it with clear water again and just kind of soak it in that clean water. Um, you can, of course, also run the water through the hair, but if you want to be gentle as possible, you can also just kind of soak it in a basin of cool water. So I'm just going to kind of rinse out the extra soap down the side. Just for good measure to make sure there's not extra soap. And then we're going to fill that up again with cool, clean, cool water. Again, make sure you're using cool water and not cold water because that can damage your wigs if it's not heat friendly. Uh, so someone asked, do you ever get makeup on your wig? Yeah, so that is a really good question because sometimes if you're wearing wigs and you wear foundation or other things like that, the hair along here, along the wig cap, along the front of your head, that can kind of get makeup on it. So as you're washing it and shampooing it, you can kind of pay special attention to any parts of the hair that might have gotten makeup on them and just very gently kind of rub that with your fingers. Just to show you an example, you can just very gently kind of just rub it. You don't want to like really scrub it hard because that can damage the fiber, but you can just kind of very gently rub the hair with your fingers with the shampoo if you're still in that stage. And then same with here, you can just very gently kind of focus on the parts where it might have gotten makeup and just very gently start to wash that out with your hands. Okay, so let's focus up a little bit more. So to start washing out the shampoo, you want to wash it out before you move on to the conditioner step. Just fill the basin with cool water, cool, clean water, and just start to kind of swish that through again. Sometimes I'll do this a few times, kind of fill up and empty the sink a few times. And then just to make sure all the soap is really out of there, sometimes I'll just run it directly under the faucet. I guess the one thing to be careful of is if you have a faucet that has just like really intense jet stream of water, you might want to just be careful that it's not too intense for the wig. Not that your wig is super delicate or anything like that. I don't want to scare people and make them feel like their wig is delicate. It's just like, you know, just kind of using caution for things like that. You don't want to use hot water. You don't want to wear, use human hair products in your synthetic wigs. Gonna swish it around and then get it out. So in this is the directions on the back of the bottle. You can do it either way, but this says gently swish wig uh, in shampoo mixture and then drain that out. Place clean water in the basin and gently swish wig in shampoo until shampoo is removed from wig. So that's the method I'm doing. And you can kind of even see more of the kind of like dirt and oils come out in the water again as you're swishing it in the clean water. Now I will just kind of put the water on a light stream and just also very gently start to rinse it out some more. You can kind of see the suds from the soap kind of bubbling up on the side. You do want to be sure to wash out all the shampoo because if you do leave any in there, it can kind of make the hair texture not feel as nice. But the only reason for that is just because there's shampoo in it still. So if you do wash your wig and it does still kind of have like a weird texture to it, it's, it's likely you might have left some shampoo in it and you just want to give it another rinse. And that should fix the problem. Again, I'm using cool water. You can kind of empty and refill the sink a few times and just start to see when the water starts stops sucking up every time you refill it. Again, I'm just holding it by the inside of the wig cap and just kind of dumping it a few times just to really make sure that shampoo is coming out. So I'm going to slowly start to bring it out of the water. Once it's around, I can already see there's a lot less suds. So the shampoo is just about out. 
Now, once you're done with this step and you start to pull it out of the water, you can go one of two ways. You can either do the route of using the Revive Liquid Enhancement, which is a really great method because that's a fantastic product that just kind of restores the natural looking shine. It can be really helpful with any static, flyaways. It's almost like, I don't want to say it's a cure-all, but sometimes it feels like it's a cure-all for a lot of um, things that might come up with a wig and just keeping it in good shape. It just really does, it, it kind of really works wonders. Um, but I'm going to do the other approach now, which is going to be to move on to the Renee of Paris conditioner. So if you were to be using the Revive Liquid Enhancement, you would want to set it aside, maybe towel and dry out some of the excess water, and then lightly spritz it with the Revive Liquid Enhancement. In this case, okay, that's definitely good because uh, the water is no longer sudsy, as you can see. I think you guys can see that, right? Uh, so now what I'm going to do so we're going to follow the directions on the synthetic conditioner. So, just so you can read exactly what it says on the bottle, so if you are working with this, you're familiar with the instructions. While holding wig at the base, apply light conditioner to the wig, working through the hair in a downward motion all the way through the ends. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, rinse thoroughly with lukewarm water. Um, I would definitely even, just to be safe, use like cool to lukewarm, but more on the cool side. Uh, gently wrap wig in towel and softly pat dry, and then allow the wig to air dry naturally, which I'll go over at the end of this. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do, I kind of just like lay my wig on the side of the sink like that, just for a moment, like get the conditioner out. Someone asked, is it possible to use, um, so I'm not familiar with the specific product you mentioned, but if someone asked about coloring a wig, you, you can't use, the one thing I'll be able to say to that is that you can't use um, human hair dye on a synthetic wig, is one thing. Um, so I definitely have tried that in the past when I was younger and wasn't sure about using human hair wig dye on a wig. I found out pretty quickly that a human hair dye does not dye wigs, and you will probably end up damaging your wig if you do that. So I'm not sure of the specific product um, you mentioned, but that just made me think of using human hair dye on a wig. You definitely shouldn't do that because it won't, the color won't stay and it'll probably just end up messing up the color that is there. Um, so I just poured a little bit of the light conditioner into my hands and I'm just very gently, very gently kind of patting it onto the wig and just working it through with my hands. And you want to be sure you're doing it in a downward motion. You don't want to be doing it upwards and kind of teasing the hair by mistake. I might just pour some directly on, just to kind of. And this will really just help restore that natural flowiness, the natural shine. Yeah. Um, yeah, I wouldn't recommend using any products that are not made for wigs specifically. Just to make sure your wig lasts as long as possible, it's definitely best to kind of um, use human hair products. Uh, but if you have questions like that in general, um, just about modifying your wig in any way, the one thing I would definitely recommend is going to a wig specialist if you're not a wig specialist yourself. Um, if you're not a licensed <laughs> cosmetologist, you can go to a wig specialist to help with any sort of questions like that. So if you have specific questions like that, then definitely try to contact um, maybe your local wig store, if they have someone that is a wig professional there, they can help you with those kind of modification questions. Okay, so I'm just very gently kind of working this conditioner through. Now, just for good measure, I feel like mostly I was kind of getting the conditioner on the outside, so just for good measure, I'm going to just add a little bit more here. Especially because a lot of times if you are wearing a synthetic wig, the part that kind of gets the most like friction on the back of your neck can be like the nape of your neck here. So just to really kind of give that some extra care. Very gently just kind of working it through. Get some of the bangs. Don't forget, don't neglect the bangs, my mistake. And again, you can even opt to let that sit for a little bit, but then you can just go ahead and start rinsing out directly in the sink with cool water. Typically, I like to start from the top and just kind of work my way down. If 
You can see the suds already coming out from that conditioner. <laughs> And once we get most of this conditioner out, I do have a wig that I washed earlier that I just left to dry on the wig stand. And now I can show you what to do once your wig does dry. So again, just to go over some of the things I mentioned earlier. Um, again, if you're washing a synthetic wig, you want to be using products made for synthetic hair because Products made for human hair can be a little bit too harsh on your synthetic wig, and using synthetic products will just help extend the lifespan of your wig. You want to be washing them in cool water, especially if they're not heat friendly. Um, even if they are heat friendly, it's better to use cool water, but especially if they're especially if they're not heat friendly, because that could permanently damage your wig. Someone asked me what wig I'm wearing now. I am wearing Royce from the Amore collection. Um, in the color, Milk TLR. Love this wig. I had to have it tied back in a ponytail. Which actually, if you go to the Renee of Paris YouTube channel, um, we just released a video on there that I made uh, showing how to put your wig into a ponytail if you ever have questions about that. And if you want to make sure you're subscribed to our Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel for all the latest updates on new releases, different tips and tutorials. And we always take requests as well. If you ever have a specific question, you can feel free to comment on any of our videos or send us a DM, and if we think it's something, we're happy to always message you on our DMs anyway and just answer it there, but if it is something that seems like it would be a frequently asked question, then we might even make a video about it, so always feel free to comment. And we always try to answer questions people ask us directly to make videos on those topics, so... A question that you comment might end up being one of our future videos, so that's always fun. Okay, I'll probably rinse out the rest of this later, but just so you're not sitting here <laughs> watching me rinse a wig for a long time. I pretty much have it all out, but um, I might come back and rinse it a little bit more. But just to show you, um, let's pretend it is all rinsed out. It actually might even be. But just to show you what you would do once that's all done, um, you can very gently kind of just shake it out with your hands. You can very gently just kind of pat it dry with a towel. Maybe just like, don't squeeze, don't wring it, don't squeeze it, don't pull it or anything like that. You can kind of just very gently Pat it dry. Maybe get the inside of the wig cap just a little bit. Sometimes if I'm like near in my shower or like holding it near my shower, I just kind of like shake it off. So the water isn't getting everywhere, like in my eyeball, like that. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna lay it here just for a quick moment. Uh, it is recommended, it's best to really dry your wig on a wig head, a wig stand. So I do have one over here. This is the wig I'm gonna switch to working with now that I just washed earlier. This is dried, so I'll show you what to do once it's at this point, because it typically will dry looking something like this, and then once you comb it and brush it out, it'll look good as new. So, but this is what it looks like when it's freshly dried. I will swap this out so I could put my Angela wig on there. This is a wig stand that I have. This is a really great travel wig stand that just collapses totally flat, and it's good for when you're on the go. It's best to kind of use a, a styrofoam wig head, but this is really great for travel. So you kind of, kind of gently shake it out just a little bit, place it on the wig head. Now here's a very key detail with long wigs. You want it to be able to dry somewhere where it can really hang. You don't want the hair to be like bending on anything and drying like that because that can affect how it ends up looking when it's dry. But if you let it to just dry in a way that it's hanging naturally, it should return to its original style just on its own. You won't have to restyle it or anything afterwards. And that's the beauty of synthetic wigs and what I love because I can be a little bit lazy with my hairstyling sometimes. So with synthetic wigs, it's really nice that once they dry, after you wash them, they dry exactly like just how they were originally styled. It's very effortless. But you just wanna make sure it's not drying with any like kinks in the hair. So you wanna make sure this is all flat. You can even very, very gently comb through it. I'm not going to do that now. It's Best to just kind of let it air dry and do what you want to do with it afterwards. One great thing to note though is if you do prefer to part the hair a certain way, you want it to be parted that way as it's drying so that the hair naturally kind of styles that way. So with bangs, for example, if you want them to be brushed to the side, you can kind of let them dry, brush to the side. If you want them to dry hanging flat and forward, I will just very gently kind of comb these. The detangling comb. 
You can let them dry forward like that. So you do want the hair to be drying in the way that you want it to look once it is dried. But you don't need to do any excess styling besides that. So I'm just going to go hang this on a shelf and make sure the hair is hanging off of something and not being crimped up like on a shelf or something like that. Switch to this wig. I'm actually just going to drape a towel over the edge of the sink so it can be drying over here like this. <laughs> Let's move this aside over here for now actually. Okay, bear with me for just a moment. Okay, here we go. Okay, so here's the wig that I washed earlier. So once it dries, it'll end up kind of looking something like this. But once you comb that through, it'll be really nice and beautiful and detangled. So I'm again just going to take the detangling comb from Renee of Paris. I like to start from the ends and just very gently comb through. Like so. Again, you want to be very gentle. If you hit a part where it's kind of tangly, just start again from the ends. It's very gently start to comb through. That's why this detangling comb is really nice because it is really gentle because it is such a wide tooth comb. It's really good at just targeting those tangles without pulling them too hard. Let's go ahead and swap this out. So again, someone asked earlier, this is Royce from the Amore Collection in Milk Tea LR. I love this style. I just have a full back of a pony right now. Swap this out. You can kind of already see, look how nice and flowy that is now that it's freshly washed. It also smells really good. I really like the smell of the uh, shampoo and conditioner. Oh, you look at that. Good as new. Oh my gosh, I love this wig. This is Astrid from the Alexander Couture Collection. I didn't realize both the wigs I was featuring in this video are Alexander wigs. So shout out to Alexander for having great styling, great wigs. <laughs> this is uh, all designed by Alexander Turnbull, one of our other um, social media specialists on Renee of Paris. Um, he also does a lot of our YouTube videos and social media content as well, so I'm sure you guys have seen him on here. So here it is. So after I've detangled it with this, then, then you can go ahead and brush it out a bit. It's nice and gentle. See, I really like how these bangs dried. I had them kind of dry off to the side, like a nice little side fringe. It just looks good as new. It is a tiny bit wet still, so you can kind of see a little bit more moisture in the hair, but simple as that. And then once it's dry, it'll kind of just flow just as nicely as it was when it was new. So let me know if you guys have any more questions. We have our Angela wig drying here. If you want to follow me on my Instagram, um, abbyandrew.yt, I'll be happy to post the final results of this when it is totally dry. But I'm really excited because sometimes, like I was saying before, I get a little bit lazy with washing my wigs sometimes. So I'm excited to be wearing this again now that it's nice and clean. But the recommendations are typically to wash your wig every two weeks of daily wear, but of course if you are switching up your wigs as often as I do, for example, you're going to have to wash it a lot less often, so it's kind of like every 14 wears per wig or so, and that can also vary depending on how how much you're, you sweat, how hot your weather climate is, if you wore it to the beach, things like that. Um, so yeah, and we'll also definitely post the results of this wig once it's dry on our Instagram story. So if you're not following us already, just be sure to be following us on Renee of Paris, where you're watching me right now. And if you don't have any questions now, as someone said my favorite I have in rose gold, I think you were referring to the Astrid, right? Astrid is such a cute style. I love all the styles that are like about this length with bangs. I always talk about Tatum being one of my favorites. This one is definitely one of my favorites. So cute. Um, but yes, <laughs> so anyway, if you don't have any, any other questions now as you're watching this, you can always watch this video and all of our other live streams on our IGTV. So if you ever miss a live stream that you wanted to go back and watch, just go to our Renee of Paris page and you can see the tab for IGTV and watch all of our past live streams on there. And we also have a ton of tutorials on Instagram and on our YouTube channel as well, Renee of Paris. Um, someone asked how long do the wigs take to dry? That is a really great, great question as well. Uh, this is something I was going to mention earlier is typically when I wash my wigs, I typically wash them at night so that they dry overnight. I would say it takes maybe like, hmm, I would say initially I would let it sit for at least an hour. It'll still be damp at that point, but 
Um, you could probably just start wearing it at that point if you want to and just have slightly damp hair, but I would say it's best to just wash them at night so by the time you wake up in the morning, it'll just be ready for you and you won't have to worry about it. Okay, so again, if you guys have any other questions later, you can find this video on our IGTV and you can leave comments on there and we'll be happy to get back to you. So thank you all so much for watching this video. I've had so much fun doing this, washing a wig on live. I hope this answered any of your questions that you might have, and I hope you all have a very lovely weekend. I'll see you next time. Bye!